So I lied. The work table is pretty much already finished. You just have to do a couple of finishing touches. As you can see, this is more than an actual work table. There is a work surface in the middle, but it's spanned between uh, two large carts. These carts are uh, mostly for storage, but also I knew uh, uh, when I started that I kind of wanted to do uh, something that was sort of portable, but could move out of the way in this uh, workspace that I'm building in the basement. And I had originally thought that I was going to build two large carts that had fold up work surfaces in between them that lock together and it was going to be this like elaborate hinging system but uh, as my friend Mike and I got into this weekend we realized that uh, that was really going to be a lot of work for something that at the end of the day is kind of just going to be a table so what I ended up deciding to do rather than this whole hinging system is to use what's called a French cleat and what a French cleat is, if you take a look real close here, is just two 45 degree cuts that are mounted uh, on vertical sheets. So when the uh, tabletop French cleat meets the cleat that's on the uh, cart, they actually kind of mesh together and force into one another and uh, that joint doesn't want to move. Uh, these are pretty common joints. I, I first looked at using a French cleat joint when I wanted to have some uh, nightstands next to either side of my bed that were freestanding on the wall and had lights underneath them. I didn't end up going with that, but I was really intrigued at how that works. You'll see a lot of other uh, woodworkers and guys that really just have kind of uh, DIY like garages will use these things to sort of either hang tools or, or stuff on their wall. And it's really nice because you can just take a piece of plywood, rip it at a 45 degree angle, you know, uh, and use either side to mount whatever you want to uh, whatever vertical surface. So they're really nice. So uh, really all we're gonna do tonight is do a little bit of reinforcement and cleanup on the tabletop itself. Uh, I'll take you through the construction process while we work on that. And uh, well, I guess we'll just get to it. So as you notice inside, this uh, tabletop spans between two carts. Now this plywood is uh, seven ply, three quarter inch AC, which is really, really strong, but still you probably noticed a little bit of bowing in between. I actually refrained from posting a picture on Project Synchro's uh, Facebook page just because I, I figured someone was gonna call me out that, hey, are you gonna reinforce that tabletop? And yes, I am, we're gonna do it right now. Uh, again, I'm trying to keep this kind of on the cheap, even though I've used decent plywood. I just uh, obviously ran to the store and picked up some one by, made a little uh, later evening Lowe's run and uh, really we're just going to chop this one by up and what I'm going to do since this tabletop is bowed uh, upward now since I have it flipped upside down and we picked up all that lumber that was absolutely just ruined uh, and bowed the other way, I'm going to cut them and flip them in such a way that the uh, two pieces are bowed opposite, then clamp them together, then screw them, and hopefully they'll kind of negate each other. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that that won't really do much because this plywood is, is pretty sturdy stuff, and this one by is absolutely terrible based on how many pieces I pulled out and had just dried and just a twisted, heaping mass of $1 wood. All right, so I know this thing is exactly five foot wide, 60 inches. So I'm gonna subtract an inch and a half, that's uh, three quarter times two for each of the uh, French cleats on the edge. All right. So a couple things worthy of note. If you're doing a lot of uh, uh, screwing into wood and you need a pilot drill, and you want to countersink before each hole, uh, you're going to want to get yourself some of these style drill bits. I think they have a name, let's see. Yeah, adjustable countersink drill bits. And these are for any numbered size screws. Uh, you'll notice this, this drill bit doesn't have an actual 
size to it. It's, it's tapered uh, throughout its uh, diameter all the way up. I'd say it starts at probably an eighth, you know, maybe a couple sixteenths or something, and it, and it tapers probably all the way up to three sixteenths are over. And then you uh, loosen these set screws and you set the countersink, which is effectively a depth stop as well. Well, you could run it further than that, but uh, the countersink is the stop and your depth adjustment. So if you need to put in a bunch of one and five eighths length number eight screws, you get out your number eight drill bit, you set the depth on it to match. And I kind of set mine to where I have a little tip of the screw here that uh, is not piloted and then uh, you know, back that up a little bit from there. And it goes in really nice. So that's what I've done here. I use that to build the whole box. Things go really quickly. It would have went even quicker if I had two drills and I could just have the Torx head because these are Torx head T25 construction screws in one and then the drill bit in the other and you could just uh, ream through everything at once. So uh, this is really helpful though. I think that set of uh, the number six, number eight, and number 10 adjustable countersink drill bits was maybe $15, and I think you can get them cheaper from Harbor Freight. Now, if I really cared about this, if this was made of metal, I would mark my hole spacing on here, but I have a weird way that I do this. I start by uh, roughly gauging where the center is between the two points that uh, I'm spanning screws, and I'll split it in half, and then I'll split that in half again, and continue to drill halfway in between all of my holes until I have a spacing that roughly looks right. That's kind of my method because if you start if you start at one end and you pick an arbitrary spacing and you work your way across chances are you're going to get to the other end and it's going to look wonky i've done that on a few surfaces before i remembered how to sort of kind of care but not really care about working with wood and uh, uh, this is by far the best way that i found to quickly drill holes that aren't spaced in a ridiculous manner all right so I've got all the screws in this thing and it looks pretty level. I am going to just run the uh, random orbital sander over at one time to get most of the burrs off. Uh, maybe just phase the edge a little. Again, mm, the level of caring for me is, is very low, just you know, based on what I'm gonna throw over the top of this. Uh, I pretty much just wanna get something workable and make sure it fits up properly. So uh, not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. Probably leave a really rough grit of sandpaper on it. I don't care. So before we mount the tabletop back up, I figured I'd show you kind of what the master plan is here. Um, obviously the poor man's Sortimo worked out really well. Use this really thin eighth inch stuff that's, it's like pre-primed eighth inch and the four by eight sheet as you saw earlier was like $12 or something. I don't think we're gonna get to cutting any more of this tonight, um, but you can obviously see uh, what the end result here is. These are just, uh, I think 13 by seven inch shelves which match these, uh, these nice $5 Harbor Freight flip top totes and uh, just screwed in some little edge pieces into the side of the uh, carts here for these shelves to sit on. Again, I'll probably glue them up, but I haven't yet because what I wanna do, if I take this out, lay this on here, actually, we'll lay it underneath is uh, I wanna make a little jig with my router to route out where the handles are. So when I go to reach in here and grab one of these boxes, I don't bang, you know, bang your knuckles in here. You can just reach in really easily and pull one out without hitting the front edge of this. So I still need to do that before I do any kind of gluing to add any more permanence to this. But I really like the way that these shelves worked out. Uh, Mike and I just got the spacing perfect on these 
And uh, what we had considered doing is uh, using like a nice thick dado blade or making a jig for my router to cut slots into this plywood for either side of the, the, uh, the cart and then slide those shelves in, make it look real professional-like, but that was just gonna take forever. So it made more sense um, I, to get this little piece of wood, you know, these, these pieces that we screwed to the sides, which I think were like um, super flat, simple trim. And it was like inch and a half wide trim. And I set the table saw into like super death mode where the uh, fence was a quarter inch away from the blade and used a push stick and just pushed these pieces through to split them into the two halves and then drill and glue and screw them to the side in the pattern we laid out. So that worked way better than doing any uh, dado cuts or routing or anything like that. And um, you know, on the whole, these carts went together in probably an hour or two a piece. Uh, most of the time was spent just drilling holes and uh, putting screws in. So as you can see on either end, we have these uh, poor man Sortimo setups. And then in the middle, there's this extra cutout here. And I haven't really thought about what I'm going to put in here yet. I know uh, on my other cart, which is dedicated to electronics, I can fit my oscilloscope in here. I got a big old school oscilloscope that I can fit in here pretty easily. And that makes sense. But on this hardware one, not really sure what I'm gonna put in here yet. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. I can put uh, more shelves in if I really want to, and then, you know, maybe sort something out through that. I really haven't thought of it. It's, this is a good problem to have, I'll say. Uh, as you can see behind me, I, I've added another shelf with more storage. It's nice to have ample amounts of storage that you can kind of think your way into what needs to go into these bins, rather than having these giant piles of shit just accumulated everywhere that you need to deal with, you, you kind of, like me, accept the fact that you're going to uh, uh, collect a bunch of parts for a project like, like Synchro, and uh, uh, you're gonna need to organize them in a, in a sort of cohesive way. So um, that's why a lot of this stuff is coming about. I wanna use the space efficiently. I wanna be able to find things and uh, boxes like this with lots of, uh, lots of shelves and little drawers and things like that make a lot of sense. So the other big reason why these are two carts that are on wheels is because I've anticipated some kind of a situation in the future where this whole space needs to be used for some temporary or more permanent project where this whole work table cart situation needs to get out of the way. So if you look kind of over where this uh, mass of vinyl and plywood and everything is and the vinyl cutter, uh, these carts can go next to each other. And when I get this area kind of cleaned up, it'll make more sense. The carts can go next to each other and roll out of the way. And then I'm gonna put another French cleat on the back of the tabletop so that it hangs on the side and clear out this whole open area so if I decide to do something crazy like build a motorcycle in my basement I can do something like that because I can get this stuff out of the way I just uh, I don't like the idea of having stuff so permanent that you can't really change the layout around quickly so uh, if I get into a scenario where this whole table is better served in the garage for some sort of project like I really quickly need to pull something off of the car or do something some kind of last minute prep and I run out of table space I might decide that it's a good idea to have just these carts or the tabletop and everything out in the garage where we were just working on that. So um, I like the idea of having everything on wheels. Uh, it makes sense to me. It might not make sense for you. Uh, e either way, I think that these uh, carts are, uh, uh, are going to come uh, to serve me for a lot of years. So this one, you'll notice, is empty right now. It doesn't even have any shelves in it. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, I want to use this one for all of my electronics equipment because this is stuff that gets used more uh, inside than it does out. So maybe I'll have shelves for, uh, you know, power supply or have a solder station right up near the top or something and then have kind of extra ancillaries, maybe some wire uh, spool storage. I think that would be really nifty. Um, and then maybe in the center section, what I'll do is if I put a little shelf up here, 
I can actually route out a hole in the top and lay in a piece of Lexan or maybe put a hinge on it or something and have a, a power supply and a multimeter and everything ready to go right in the tabletop so you can just flip this open, get the leads out and use it. I don't know, maybe that's overkill or I'm limiting myself to having everything mounted in there, but I have more than one multimeter. I have a couple, I've got that old cool Heath kit like Nixie Tube One and a big bench power supply that would uh, be better served kind of more permanently mounted and I can use my other meters elsewhere. So um, that's kind of the other nice thing about making stuff out of plywood is it's fairly cheap, it's versatile. If I decided to pull the top off of this thing and make something completely different, I can just unscrew it, match drill, and put something else new on it. It doesn't matter. I really, really thought about uh, welding things out of square tube, like I did the supports for my bench out in the garage, but that just seemed like uh, too much time. I'd much rather make it out of wood. Plus, if you haven't watched uh, Mateus Wandel's YouTube channel, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, over the past couple of months where I've been slacking off and Kyle hasn't been over here doing uh, uh, videos on a regular basis, I've just been binge watching the past five years of Mateus Wandel making these insane contraptions out of plywood. He made a bandsaw out of plywood that is fantastic. So maybe we'll put a link in the comments below or in the, in the description below. Go check out Mateus Wandel's YouTube channel. It is absolutely fantastic. You'll enjoy it. So um, in the meantime, let's throw the top back on this thing and uh, see how everything looks. Ah yes, there is absolutely a direction that it has to go, so I'm going to have to remember to mark that. Um, the way Mike and I put this together was to actually clamp both sides of the French cleat into place before screwing the tabletop to it. So we got everything in place, and just like with welding, the very last operation you do is to join these, uh, these points that matter. So. Uh, the very last thing we did is to pre-drill and screw the top to the cleat. So I think this worked out pretty well. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next here. I don't know. Uh, I think the next step is to just get everything cleaned up a little bit more. I might think about either putting a coat of paint on this or maybe just some varnish depending upon how it looks. And then uh, I'm going to look around. I know there are a couple companies that cut custom sizes or will sell you very large sizes of self-healing cutting mat. And that's definitely what I wanna do on here. I wanna get some nice uh, self-healing cutting mat or grid mat or whatever you wanna call it to uh, turn this into a nice work table without having to worry about actually finishing the wood surface or worry about damaging the wood surface over time. But this is like really stout. I don't know if I, I, I was briefly considering jumping up and sitting on this I don't think I want to do that because there's not so much weight in the carts, but like the carts are like super stout and impressive. So um, three quarter inch plywood, I, I am impressed with. Obviously, if you're super thick and you gusset everything, it's fine. But um, I'm really happy with how this table came out. I'm excited to do more videos in this space. As you can see, it's now well lit and usable. I think I'm gonna call this the uh, Project Synchro Annex or something. I don't know, I guess that makes more sense. Um, so until next time, uh, thank you guys again for being patient with us. We'll be back with uh, more actual Project Synchro videos of the car soon. Uh, I'm excited, as not many have said, to start doing wiring in this space right here on this table. Uh, if there's anything you guys and gals wanna see specifically or other questions you have or other little piddly projects you'd like to see around the shop or the annex or the garage or whatever you want to call it, let us know in the comments below. Uh, once again, thanks for all the likes and nice comments and messages from you guys over the past couple of months. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Kyle appreciates it too. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you much. Project Synchro Lumber Storage Facility. Today, we're building a desk. Today, we're building a work table. Kind of want to do something else. I don't know.
been a while since I've done this. Yeah. I'm trying to th trying to say this in such a way that doesn't make it sound like I've already done everything and whatever, but you're gonna need to uh, uh, put some gussets in there with it. Eh, I'm gonna do that over again. Yeah. It's like your, you know, like your comfort blanket. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Clapped out, clapped out old circular saw. I got really As I'm looking at the cord dangling towards the blade, I see the last place where the blade cut the cord. <laughs>